mean to have Chris back and just you know have a little vibe with him and the guys with him. You know, he was getting back in action tonight. It's good to have him back. He's been working, working diligently to you know get back and not just get back, but play right. at the level that he wants to play. And you know, I'm sure the guys are jacked up about it. Curious when you know how diligent he is, but did you even foresee him getting back this quickly, considering the, the initial time frame of six to eight weeks? I didn't put a limit on it or think that deeply about it. Um, I just listened to the medical staff and I'm with Chris every day and I mean, we talk all the time. So I just watched him progress in his rehab and watched him on the floor um, when he was doing stuff. And I'm not surprised or anything. I'm just grateful he's back. What are things that because of him being out that other guys have done, be it Dev and other guys handling the ball, that with him now back, maybe he can do even more things, possibly off the ball. And Maybe the offense needs to be more diverse because of that. You coaching the team now? You trying to tell us how to? Like, I'm not coaching the team. But what the yeah, you would. No Should doubt. find you for being late. No doubt about that. Um, I just think anytime you lose guys, not just Chris, but we've had guys out all year long. It's allowed for guys to experience what it's like to take the ball out of bounds in a simple end of game uh, situation, how pressure packed that is. And I think the more you do it in season and, and the more times you experience it, the more you, you don't necessarily get used to it from a, it being easy standpoint, but at least you experience it. And uh, the, the guy that I'm seeing were two guys, you know, campaign and Landry, those guys have been able to be in tight situations, handling the ball, taking big shots, initiating offense. And, and that wouldn't have happened if Chris wasn't out or Book didn't have some of the COVID you know, issues he had this year. So I, I think it can be a blessing, if you will, especially if you can win the game. You know, it, <laughs> that makes it a lot um, easier to take or to swallow. So we just tried to you know, get everybody ready um, all year long. Player development has been a big deal for us for three years, and it helps when you lose guys. Yeah, I just I'm going to read him, and you know, I have a target in my mind, but I can't cookie cut it. I think I have to, you know, watch him, and especially when there's a break in action. Um, there's certain signs as an athlete that you kind of know when a guy is laboring or that kind of thing. And he's, he knows if he's feeling it, he'll tell me. Um, but I think it's something we're going to monitor. You won't see him close to his normal, you know, 28 to 32. Um, but I do feel like, you know, with the games we have left, we got to do our best to get him where he needs to be. Um, for the rhythm of the team and going forward. Yeah, I mean, Mike's one of the best in the league. I mean, if you look at this program, I'm not quite sure anybody's won as much as Denver has over the past few years. I mean, we may have won since the bubble. We won some games, but they've been winning here for a minute. And um, Mike's a guy that I've, you know, spent a lot of time with <laughs> on the floor, in the office, on the plane. Uh, Mike helped me to form some of my thoughts about coaches going home early to be with their family because he was, he was in the office way too late for me. And um, I didn't want to get the look from Jocelyn when I saw her. So I just have a great deal of respect for how he's handled all the adversity they've been through. And he's, I know he's a really good coach because he helped me. And um, he was our lead assistant in New Orleans. And I had Chris Paul, David West, 
and some veterans, but I also had Mike Malone. So to get that kind of endorsement is pretty cool. But I don't think any of us go into the season, you know, thinking about that. I think we just want to do well for our players and the organization. And when you hear that stuff, it's it's cool. But that, I don't think it's our goal as coaches. In that same vein, um, do you have any thoughts on who the MVP would be at this juncture of the season? I know there's nine games left, <laughs> uh, but you know, where do you feel like that MVP race is going? I typically don't mess with that because there's so many players that are having monster years. I, I struggle with, and I'm biased, but I struggle with the fact that, you know, I, I don't get on a lot of platforms at all. I'm usually hoops hype and NBA uh, app on my phone, right? And I saw Devin was in like ninth place. Okay. There you go. That's all you need me to say. Like, how, how do you do it? How do you, what's the criteria? The criteria seems to be a moving target every year. Is it winning in stats? Is it stats? Is it impact on winning? Like, I don't know what it is. So it's hard to make a judgment as a coach. And if I do that, I spend too much time getting upset about it because two of our guys aren't where they should be. So I, I, I do know the guys that get the mention a lot and they they should get it. I mean, Joker, Giannis, Embiid, but to have Devin in ninth. Yeah, exactly. I don't think we look at it from that perspective. I think it's about our team trying to stop a guy like Jokic. Um, obviously, there's you know two really good bigs playing against each other, but over the course of the game, like last night, we'll have different guys on uh, Nicola from time to time. So it's hard to, you know, make that point about the matchup aspect of it. But I know when you're playing against a guy like that, you get jacked up for it. But um, he, he poses so many problems for your team. Our team defense has to be at the highest level because of his scoring on every level, the passing, um, and his conditioning is unlike any big I've seen. Um, he, he's one of the more well-conditioned athletes in the league. I don't think he gets enough credit for that. <laughs> you guys are shucking down the corn today, man. Holy smokes. Um, it has, I mean, it's the players. You know what I mean? It's it's we do what we try to do to put guys in a position to to do well, but it, it's it's players. I mean, to play well on the road, you have I think you have to have a really good backcourt, um, and we feel like we have the best backcourt in the league. Um, but you also have to have veterans, I think, that can execute. You rarely win a lot on the road with young players, and um, we've gotten a lot of experience with the young players we have. But it, it's it's players. That, that's the bottom line. I finish with Tim Bontes, Tommy Riddle. Hey, Monty. Hope you're doing well. Um, not to make you talk more about awards, but when you said that you had a couple guys that aren't where you'd like them to be, I assume one of them is Mikhail in the Defensive Player of the Year uh, voting. And I was just curious, we've seen over the past couple decades, generally bigs are kind of put at the top of the list for that award, right? And so I was curious from a coach's perspective, if you could, um, whether you want to make a case with Mikhail directly or not, I'd be curious if you think that guards and wings should be considered more for that award, and if so, why? I'm, I'm not saying they should. I'm not quite um, sure who should be in that position because it's hard to say when you don't have a criteria that you can look at and say, okay, he checked this box, he checked that box, he checked. I don't think there's um, a template that we can all follow. So therefore it's just, it's hard to make an assessment in my opinion. I I'm speaking from the impact that Mikhail has on the game defensively. He guards multiple positions. Um, he guards the toughest guy every single night um, from a wing position, which 
in my opinion, is, is the toughest position to guard with the way we play and the pace. And he takes so much pressure off of his teammates with that ability to guard multiple positions. Um, and it's the deflections, it's the length, it's chasing down uh, guys to get a contest. It's a lot of variables that he brings to the table. And in saying that, I'm not disrespecting the other guys that are in the running. It's just my opinion about what I see from him night in and night out um, and his attitude towards it. You know, again, he doesn't flinch when he has a big time matchup and he'll guard guys smaller and quicker. He'll guard guys that are bigger and stronger. And he does it every night. And I think that has to be taken into account. Thank you.